Hi, welcome back to me and Monami. And um, today we're in Paris. In fact, we're in our little boutique, boutique hotel in the Pigalle, the red light district of Paris. Um, and we're about to, uh, to go on, I think, a sort of two day binge of eating, drinking, shopping, gallerying, and even visiting Paris's oldest restaurant tonight, the Tour d'Ajon. Hi, welcome to our room. <laughs> this is our um, boutique, boutique hotel room. It's actually, um, we're rather pleased with it. We only paid, I think, about 98 euros a night, which for Paris is, you know, not bad. In fact, it was cheaper than most Airbnbs we looked at. And, um, well, we came in here and we thought, this is not bad. I mean, just take a look at this giant bed. I mean, I can really get away from Mr. Boo here, but actually it's an enormous bed. Um, the slight downfall is that <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get past the enormous bed, you, you do need to be quite thin to get past the telly. The telly's, uh, you know, you could, you could sort of garrote yourself on the telly. But um, it's super comfortable, isn't it, Mr. Boo? It's very comfortable. Give it the bed test. There you go, there's proof. Super comfortable. But, um, yeah, aside from having to negotiate the end of the bed and needing to be thin to do so, it's got everything you need. There's a wardrobe, there are a ton of sockets, which I really approve of because it's impossible to do what we do with vlogging and all the equipment when they don't have lots of sockets. It's got tea and coffee making facilities. It's even got a copy of Rudyard Kipling's If, because apparently there's some connection with Mr. Kipling. He does make exceedingly good hotels. Um, but out here, you've got... Um, the streets of the Pigalle, you've got Hotel Josephine after, opposite, isn't you? I mean, not tonight, but one night we might go there, Josephine. And get this for our 98 euros a night. We even got a toilet. No, I mean, we even got a bath, a bath. Right, hotel room tour completed. Let's hit the streets and get some breakfast, Mr. Boo. Some Petit déjeuner. Mm -hmm. Is that what they call it? Aye. Aye. I think it's a bit early to go to the Moulin Rouge, Mr. Boo. Have you seen the size of the sexodrome? I know, I mean, it's uh, 10.02 on a Tuesday morning, I don't think I need any sexodrome, do you? It's the world's biggest love store. I don't think there's any love involved. It's lost, Mr. Boo, lost. Now, it's a little known fact that Mr. Boo used to live in Paris, didn't you? A long, long time ago. What did you do here? Did you work in the Pigalle? I didn't work in the Pigalle. I was a teacher here. A teacher? Yeah. What were you teaching? teaching people to behave better and to be nicer to people. Oh, oh, was it like a department school? <laughs> yeah, something Mr. like Boo's that. Mr. Boo's School of Department. Was it like Sound of Music? It was like a finishing school. A finishing school, I bet. I bet it finished off half them students. But anyway, he thinks he's a bit of an expert on Paris, whereas I know I've only been about three times. And to be honest, I'm not that much of a fan. But I'm going to give it a go this time. Um, but you're going to direct us, aren't you, Mr. Boo? to what I can remember, yes. He's going to take us to all the hot spots. So where are we headed now for somewhere for breakfast? We're going to head for breakfast on the Rue des Martyrs. The Rue des Martyrs? Martyrs, the oh. Martyrs Street. The Martyrs Street, and will we be having toast at Tomatoes? Yes, yeah, something like that. Oh, and have you got a specific venue in mind? No. Oh, we're just going to search on this, this street, are we? Something like that, yes. Well, let's get going. What's this, Mr. Bull, this Madame Arthur? It says it's the Divan du Monde, which presumably is the bed of the world. It's, uh, Madame Arthur is uh, the oldest transsexual bar in Paris. Really? Is this what you taught your pupils? <laughs> Something like that. So we are going to this place, the Bouvet. Now, Bouvet usually in French, of course, just means a little uh, sandwich stand on the side of the road, really, mm. a truck. But uh, this is uh, this is they've nicked the name. 
Um, let's see what it's like. Oh, that looks a nice set. Cappuccino, Mr. Boo. Give it a whirl. Oh, that's nice. Is it? Has it got nice elastic milk? Mmm, tastes like elastic milk. The boo's laughing about my elastic milk comment, but I make coffee every day. And when you stretch the milk, which is when you get the air into the milk, if I don't get it right, I get really annoyed. But I say, I've done it wrong today. But if I get it right, get the elasticity. So I've gone for Earth Bruyere with the Jambon of Bayonne. Very posh, which is basically scrambled eggs on toast and some ham. It looks tasty. It's also got some Parmesan on top. Let's see what it's like. Mmm. Delicious light scrambled eggs. I've got a feeling eggs are their thing here. They've got, they've got a lot of eggs on their shell. And the ham's lovely. Very fine light, salty, bay on the ham. Mmm, delicious. Well, what have you got, Mr. Boo? I have got a croque monsieur. A classic croque monsieur, which is what? Cheese and ham toasty. Cheese and ham toasty. Have you had the breville out? Looks like it. Might have been cheaper. Um, but uh, take a look at this. This is a posh toasty. Give it a whirl. Served with little cornichons. I'm laying off the cornichons. I've had a terrible wind since that train. Trapped. What's the verdict? Mm. What's in it? So good. Um, Gruyere and ham and a bit of bechamel sauce. Ooh. I might Very have a taste of that. Well, that came to 39 euros. Now, <clears throat> that's pretty steep for a bit of breakfast, a toasty and, uh, and, you know, scrambled eggs and some ham. I have to say, the scrambled eggs and the ham were superb. The ham particularly was incroyable, and you really enjoyed your yes, toasty. And the coffee was very good. Um, I still think it's a bit on the dear side. And do bear in mind that in Paris, we've discovered that the service charge is optional, but is extra. Down in the south, it's often compris, isn't it? Um, so this is twice now we've been caught out. And I, given Mr. Boo got the wrong order initially, I found it quite difficult to give 10% service charge, but I did, because I was feeling generous. The other thing to note is it's one of those places where all the furniture's reclaimed, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm just too old to sit on a reclaimed stool. So I ended up having to sit on my coat because I was so uncomfortable. But um, the food is good, I can't knock it. Anyway, right, Mr. Boo, where are we going now? We're heading to a surprise destination. Surprise destination? Is that going to surprise the viewers? Yes, and you. Oh, are we going shopping? Maybe. Rue des Martyrs, uh, Martyrs Street, and uh, the Rose Bakery is very, very trendy, very... Oh, let's go have a look. It looks like something you find in Notting Hill, but I'm not sure there isn't one. Oh, yes, very nice. Look at this in the window. Oh, wowza. That's posh. That's posh quiche. Posh quiche. It looks delicious. It really is food heaven, this zone. Look at this cheese shop. It's incroyable, and there is a butcher's over the road that I'm literally, I want to run over to. I'm so excited. But wow, look at that. This is a fromagerie and a half. What's this area called, Mr. Boo? So it's South Pigal, but they call it Soapy. Soapy, like Noho. Like Noho or um, Nolita. A boho. <laughs> no but this is the butcher's. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. Now that. That is a coated of pork. Look at those. Apologies to vegetarians, some beautiful pintard. Incredible poulet fermier, 15 a kilo though. Cocolet. Pigeon. And pigeon, you don't see a lot of that. And just look at that bee. Wowza. 
That is quite a butcher. Look, just look at this. Pastries in here, and then incredible uh, terrines. Look at these patties, Mr. Boo. And did oh that 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 uh, that pork pie looks lovely. <laughs> God, that looks lovely. That looks so delicious. Everybody says France is losing its crown as the uh, food nation of the world. I think you better come to South Pigal. Incredible stuff. A fantastic poissonnery. Oisan. So we just discovered this alley. Where are we? Instead of Saint Denis? Or through Saint Denis. And it's sort of almost like a. Edwardian Arcade, we've got one of these in Dewsbury, but it's uh, certainly down this far end it's got uh, it's got quite a lot of sort of Korean and japanese food and intriguing. So we seem to have happened upon Chinatown here, which is fabulous. Not uh, not enormous, but there's enough of it. Now looks, this looks great in here. Do you like this? I love this little diner. This is really reasonable. And this place, right at the end of uh, Chinatown, that street, very, very reasonable. 13.50 and a formula for lunch, entree and plat or plat and dessert for 16.50. Can't go wrong there. Have your egg mayonnaise for 5.50. Love an egg mayonnaise. Oh, discovered a little market, food market. Well, it's quite buzzing today. Oh, so we're having some spritzers over there. Nice little Aperol spritz bar here. It's a little bit like uh, thingy market in like London. Berra market. has got hints of Berra market. Lots of food stalls. Um, may not be quite as busy as there. Lots of sort of drink places as well. Um, Quite buzzy. This looks good. Whole filet, 38. Um, yeah, it's the sort of place you just come and perch and grab a bit of food. There'll be some good stuff in here. More traditional pizza, galettes over here, crepes. And then next to it, sort of fruit and veg. All going on. Fun, doesn't it? Is this where you um, you used to take your students, Mr. Boo? This is somewhere I used to take my students. This is where you used to teach them? No, I might have, I might have called in for a, for a... To be social. For a spritz of the day, whatever we used to drink. Thursday's golden showers and punishment night. Is that a drink? It must be. So, so when I used to live here, it was actually much more of a market, which shows how much things have changed. It was properly a fruit and veg market, and now it's all, nearly almost all, food stalls. The way of the world. The way of the world. And do you know why it's called the Marché aux Enfants Rouges? No. Because it used to be an orphanage, and the orphans would wear red clothes, so that's how you knew they were orphans. Oh, top Mr. Boo fact. Top tip. I have to say, we still haven't seen a citron of meat. <laughs> But this is quite a buy. Look at this. This is cake. Electric scooter. You'd think that was a lead acid battery. I don't think it is. I think it just looks like one, but um, quite a number. And this is Klein Epstein Parker, who make RuPaul's suits. Who's RuPaul? Oh, jeez. Is that that hairdresser? Yeah, it's that hairdresser. In Dewsbury. Aye. RuPaul. I used to go to him. Finally spot an electric vehicle, but it's not on a me, it's a biro. Um, and it seems to be uh, the biro of an optical shop. They are a bit, bit noddy car to me. So we've come to a very traditional sort of family bistro-y brasserie thing because we spotted outside on the blackboard that they did onion soup and I like an onion soup. So we're just going to have an onion soup because then we're headed to the, uh, to the Picasso exhibition. Don't worry, we won't bore you with endless pictures by Picasso, but we might, we might show you some choice bits. 
but let's see what the onion soup's like first in uh, what's this called Le Benjamin. Le Benjamin and it's actually on a kind of very mainstream almost like Oxford Street uh, place to be honest we just got tired we needed to sit down and it looked nice and the onion soup grabbed us so let's see what happens your French onion soup has arrived let's see what it's like look at that thick French onions, cheese, is it Gruyere? Gruyere. Some bread in there. That looks nice. I'm excited. Mmm. Homemade? Homemade. Nice beef stock. Yeah? Yummy. Yum. That is delicious. I just think it's the perfect dish for a winter's day and boy have we done some steps to get here but it is the most lovely dish and it's nine euros top tip if you want a cheap lunch nine euros onion soup le benjamin well that was very nice in the end we had a bit of a bit of a contretemps when we got in because i didn't want to sit by the door but then the waiter warmed to us in fact he particularly warmed to you mr boo didn't well, he? i am adorable and young but um, what was the total bill? That was 35 euros. 35 euros. Now, the urine suit was only died each, so how did we get to 35 euros? The answer is, well, we had vast amounts of Perrier water. Perrier water. It was very nice, but uh, then a couple of coffees. A duper electric BMW motorcycle, but still no Citroen Amis. Well, we went to the Picasso, but the best thing about the Picasso wasn't the Picasso, because actually a couple of floors were closed. Uh, was oddly the Rosenberg collection, wasn't it? Indeed. And basically, it was this wonderful collection of cues of this guy, put, a rich guy, put in his Parisian apartment in the 20s, and, uh, well, up to about the 1930. And then he lost all his money in the, in the crash, and it had all got dispersed around the world, but um, he had some top stuff. Anyway, it's now time to uh, head back to the hotel where we're going to change for dinner at Paris's oldest, most famous, and well, I imagine quite posh restaurant, the Tour d'Argent. Mm. So tonight, Mr. Boo is wearing. Tonight, we are in uh, ASOS and we are in a bit of Gucci, and we are in vintage All Saints. And you've got a pearl necklace. And I've got a pearl necklace, because who doesn't love a pearl necklace? Let's see. And what are you wearing? Well, I, I have no idea where I got this. I, this shirt came from a, a friend of mine who died. It's Turnbull and Asa, and he always used to say it was um, uh, supplied by the sh shirt makers to the shirt lifters. Now, that is a really bad joke. It's politically incorrect, and it probably won't make the final edit. The sleeves, um, he, well, he was very keen on five button cuffs. So I don't know if you can see this. No, three button cuffs, should I say, three button cuffs. Um, and he always did covered buttons. And you can see these buttons are all covered. Um, this vest underneath is very cheap and I'm rather hot already. But um, anyway, this is this is my outfit. Down below, I'm, I'm wearing uh, super dry combats and, uh, uh, and uh, converse. I think it's uh, it's it's the look of Paris this season. We've arrived at the Tour d'Argent now and um, we're absolutely not sure we're going to get to film in here, not least because it is our friend's birthday party and I, I don't think it's fair to just vlog somebody else's birthday, much as, you know, I'd like to. Um, but we are excited. It is, I think we've decided, both of us have never been to a one-star Michelin restaurant. So on that level, it's exciting. Um, now, what I'm going to try and do, if we can't film at the table, I'm going to nip out into the lav between courses keep you updated. How's about that then? It smells of fire, it's like being back in Yorkshire. You know, my Auntie Hilda used to have a fire, a coal fire like this. She used to do her chips on it.
Well, <laughs> we've just come out of uh, the Tour d'Argent. It's half past 12. Uh, we went in there at half past eight. That was possibly the most monumental meal I have ever eaten. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Uh, I mean, that place is incredible. The sense of theatre uh, is, uh, I mean, unmatched. I know, I've never been anywhere. I mean, just incredible. The waiting staff, the view onto Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, the whole thing is an incredible experience. Um, I mean, <laughs> I have never eaten anything like it or so much food i mean their duck is unbelievable the foie gras course was gigantic oh my god, oh my god. uh the amuse bouche which were the starters you know starter stuff i thought were the most incredible things really yeah. they were so special the wine uh we had uh, one the white for the foie gras it was 1995 it came up with cobwebs on it yeah and dust, I mean, I don't know why they just added them, but no, uh, the wine list itself came out. It is like three telephone directories. It has 320,000 bottles of wine. Um, uh, we're not gonna name any names in this video. We just wanna say thank you to uh, the people who <laughs> paid for this meal because I'd right now be, uh, uh, um, I'd be, I'd be at the doors of the bank, pleading with the bank manager for mercy. Um, but incredible experience. If you ever get a chance to go to the Tour d'Argent, you will never forget it. It is quite unlike anywhere else. Um, anyway, we're off home to bed and, uh, and, and a few Rennies, I think, because uh, that was a rich meal. So it's the morning after the night before and uh, we've come for a bit of duck for our breakfast. Not true, not true. Um, we've, uh, we've made it stumbled out into the, into the light of Paris, the grey light of Paris. Uh, it's about uh, 11.45 and uh, Mr. Boo's having a croissant. I just had a banana. And uh, we're headed to Montparnasse where we are booked in for lunch. <laughs> really does seem like the greediest holiday ever uh, but we booked in for lunch at a place called the select which i'm intrigued by because it's a sort of old school brasserie that um, used to be frequented by the bohemian intellectuals between the wars so hemingway's been here and scott fitzgerald and and uh, jean marais and uh, well let's see what it's like but um, first let's see what mr boo makes at breakfast what are you having, Mr. Boo? I'm having a cappuccino. A cappuccino and uh, and, and a, a croissant. A pano raisin. A pano raisin. Show us the pano raisin. Oh, we've all seen a pano raisin, but it's very nice. And what are these little things here? Some little treats for you because she thought you'd feel left out. Oh, a little. And what are they? They're like little uh, pastry buns with some crystallized sugar on top. Oh. What are they called? This area, this soapy area that we looked at yesterday with uh, all the fantastic food shops, today we sort of came down here via some of the streets that run adjacent to those and there's some great little uh, local restaurants and there's also some sort of, I guess, on the up fine dining but quite reasonable, quite reasonably priced. So if you come to Paris and you're looking for a good area to explore that perhaps is not instantly on the map in terms of food, soapy, I would say is is the area south of Pigalle south of Pigalle check it out it's my top tip pretty easy to use the uh, metro 230 oh you've got four yeah because we'll be coming back oh okay 230 a journey isn't it but if you get the card you get their pass it's two pounds a journey and it's a flat rate isn't it yeah there's no zoning, it's not like London. Not until you get outside the periphery. Oh, not until you get outside the periphery. You heard it here, folks, first. that Mr. Boo? It's the Tour Montparnasse. It's the tallest building in, in the centre of Paris. Mm. 
Well, we've come into Montparnasse Rail Station because we were hoping to find this incredible electric mini fire truck that the Pompiers use for emergencies to sort of pick up injured people and all of that stuff. But, well, we can't find it. And short of faking an illness, I don't think we're going to find it. But um, we'll put a picture up for you. It's a very buzzy crowd, I have to say, it's a very lovely crowd. There's people writing scripts, there's people in very fashionable clothes, there's lots of old couples, there's lots of people who clearly come here quite a lot and have been here, coming here for years. Um, so let's see what the food's like, but it's definitely still got that buzz. you got, Mr. Boo? I've got one of my all-time favourites, egg mayonnaise. Egg mayonnaise. Now, how French is that? Have a taste. Is it eggs with mayonnaise? It's eggs with mayonnaise. <laughs> Can't really go wrong, I guess, unless the eggs aren't very nice. Mm. Egg mayonnaise? Egg mayonnaise, it's just so yummy. Well, we've both gone for the set, which is um, a very good deal, but we'll tell you about that in a bit. Uh, I've gone for the starter, which is a red cabbage soup. A velouté. It's nice. It's a very hearty red cabbage soup. Very intellectual. So, what have you got, Mr. Boo? Just got some sausage and beans. Sausage and beans. Let's have a look at that. Right, tuck in. It's like a sausage hedgehog. I tell you what, I think if I've had that, I, I, I well, I'd need a kite. What are the beans? I don't know. They're like. They're like Heinz. They're not Heinz. It's like haricot blanc, like or like in a tomato sauce. In a tomato sauce, um, and it's Toulouse sausages. Toulouse sausage. Toulouse. Toulouse. Oh, so what's in a Toulouse sausage? Well, it's pork sausage from Toulouse, but with garlic. No, it's not very garlicky. No. I've gone for something very unusual: fish. I do like fish when I get it, but I never think to order it. I don't know why. The minute I see beef or steak or beef, I just get excited. Anyway, I've gone for a swordfish, and it was meant to come with the uh, endive, but it uh, th they were out, so I've had to have haricot there. Um, but it's got foaming butter on the top, um, and it certainly looks like it'll be very tasty. And I actually, I do like tuna, and swordfish is a bit in that zone, isn't it? Oh, that's lovely. That's almost like a steak. Not a beef steak. You can tell you're in an intellectual restaurant because the uh, blocked up toilet's got Palestine written on it. Well, we've had to shelter from the rain. Now we've come out of Le Select. Being intellectual does not protect you from the weather. Now, what did you make of the, uh, the intellectual crowd in there, Mr. Boo? Well, I might have had a little run-in with our neighbours at the next table. It's a great crowd, but um, um, they, they, they wear their intelligence very heavily because Mr. Boo had to ask for some salt and pepper, and when, what happened? Well, if there's one thing that I love is having my perfect French corrected. You were, <laughs> you were corrected by an intellectual, weren't you? Yeah, because I said, can I um, steal your salt and pepper? And he said, oh, we don't really say steal. We would really say, can I take your salt and pepper? Well, you know what he can take. I, I wasn't sure it was a he. Well. I think it was a she. I think they were annoying. Anyway, what about the bill? It came to at 50 euros. It's a really good deal. Really it's good. two courses. It includes a free glass of wine. It wasn't the best wine, but it's perfectly drinkable. Uh, and you get a coffee. Yeah. So it comes to about 45 pounds, at lunch for two with wine and coffee in, um, I think, a really great, old school Brazilian with a, a really tip top crowd. Anyway, we were going to take you to Montparnasse Cemetery now and don't say we don't treat you, but it is absolutely tanking down. 
So I don't know what we're going to do. Run for it, Mr. Boo. Run to a department store, I guess. Yee! Very good, you get a laminated uh, itinerary. Not many cemeteries have that. Well, we just discovered that there's the grave of Samuel Beckett, he of waiting for Godo fame in here, and also Andre Citroën, the uh, inventor of the Citroën. But Mr. Boo, there's the TARDIS here. And here he is, old Sam. The godfather of existential theatre, 1989. Somebody's left him some metro tickets. Let's go. They do not move. The Adams family. Oh yeah, the Adams family. Well, we just dashed from the cemetery into uh, Bon Marché and. Uh, Checked out their food hall. A bit difficult to film in town in there, but uh, my God, is it a cornucopia of uh, French food? It's not cheap, but it's uh, it's good to rub a neck. Anyway, we're now headed back to the Figal. Well, it's our final morning in the city of dreams and death. Uh, Guess what, it's raining again. But uh, we're, we're now going to a, a sandwich shop we spotted a couple of days ago that we decided we were gonna get our picnic, didn't we, to take on the train to be authentically French, because the train doesn't go till two o'clock, so we're gonna get a big picnic and uh, head for the uh, Gare de Lyon. Gare de Lyon. Gare de Lyon, let's see what they've got. I have a, a macchiato or something already. We were saying about this being such a fun, funky, cool area. This is a shop just for DJs. Look at this. Amazing. Just at the end of Guitar Street, you've got this very trendy bar, which was throbbing the other night at sort of 1.30 a.m. And uh, it's called, what's it called, this? Pink Mama. Pink Mama. This looks a very, very down with the kids, groovy place. Kind of place I hang out. Well, we have just had a monumental one hour taxi ride across the town because it was torrential rain. Um, but we're at Gare de Leon and we're just about in time. So let's go find the train and uh, hopefully then we can have a picnic. So we've managed to make it to 5.31 without eating, but uh, we're now leaving Marseille. Oh, lovely. Looks nice, that. Then I've got some sandwich. Sandwich. We bought those at 11 o'clock. They might have gone off. They might look a bit. Might have exploded a bit. Oh, yeah. One is copper Show with some dried tomatoes. Copper showers. So is the coppers. Oh, now that looks. That looks tip top copper. Look at that. Oh, la la. And this. Is Bressaola. That's mine. With some uh, avocado. Oh, there's, oh, the camera, that. Oh, avocado. I didn't know I got avocado. I don't like avocado. Oh, I can have a bit of each. Not much. It's too modish for me. This is a, a beautiful drink that I constructed myself from some old whiskey and some lemonade, but we forgot a cup. Anyway. Um, we're going to carry on eating this 
and uh, hopefully in a couple of hours we're going to be back in Nice. Anyway, really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a like, please give us a comment and um, think about buying us a coffee. It really helps support the channel and enables us to do more adventurous things. But most of all, folks, stay charged. Bye. Bye.